Okay, so it's 10.40, so good, uh, good morning. Uh, let me welcome you to the second class of our course, Data Analytics for Students of Social Sciences and Humanities. Today's topic is uh, Andre Mazon and his correspondence archive. And before we get into this topic, I have two quick notes, two quick announcements. The first one concerns our to-do list, a list of things that you or students have to do to work with the systems in the practical sessions. Um, none of you sent me an email, so I don't think anyone had a problem. In other words, that you successfully sign up for the, for the systems. And if you haven't done so, please do it as soon as, soon as possible to be ready for the next class, which will be practically, practically oriented. And I hope that everyone knows uh, a, a to-do list I am speaking about. Let me, let me share you a link, a link to the to-do list. And uh, my second note concerns asking questions during, during, during the lectures. So please use chat only. And because we want to be sure that our video recordings or our video files obey, obey the law. Yeah. Okay, so perfect. So, so let me say good morning to, to Sylvie Archambault. And uh, the force is yours, Sylvie. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, personally, I, I wish I could give this lecture in Czech. <laughs> it would be a great pleasure for me, but unfortunately, I'm not able to. So, um, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, I will share my screen. Okay. Okay, um, can you see my uh, PowerPoint? Yes, perfect. Okay, so um, I will uh, acquaint you with um, André Mazon and his, in his historical and intellectual context. Um, When we start working on a corpus, um, it's because we have a research question to, to deal with. And um, one of these questions um, linked uh, with uh, André Mazon uh, can, could be the emergence of uh, scientific networks in uh, Slavic studies. Um, just a few words about, uh, about that. Um, it's fascinating aspect of uh, history of science today uh, because these networks uh, play uh, an important role in the dynamic of research um, in uh, uh, across the borders um, they these networks bring together people from all academic ba backgrounds and uh, these networks, transnational networks, um, have greatly contributed to the internalization of fields of studies since the middle of the 19th century. Uh, they sprang uh, in Europe starting from the second half uh, of the 19th century. And uh, uh, before that, of course, uh, there were personalities interested in extending, in extending views on common interest. But uh, from uh, the middle of the 19th century, um, they became uh, assemblies uh, gathering scholars and amateurs from several countries. And uh, the First World War brought the life um, of these networks to an abrupt halt. I, they could no longer meet at major conferences. And um, that, that was the case uh, for Slavic studies. But uh, once the war ended, some people thought that it was 
that this European academic life could be restored. And um, in times of peace and free movement, networks can form and develop with a certain autonomy from political events, forces and powers. Um, and um, the uh, Mason Corpus is um, a good illustration uh, of that. Um, let's start from a corpus. For, for us, um, uh, 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 Mason's uh, correspondence is a corpus. Uh, a corpus is the usual term for archive studies. Uh, our corpus is a corpus of uh, 3,000 letters that were written to André Mazon throughout his academic career. So uh, our corpus, uh, um, from the archive studies point of view, is identified and entitled. It's the collection of André Mazon correspondence. And um, first of all, we have to establish an inventory of these letters. This inventory has to be exhaustive. And um, afterwards, after this inventory, uh, we can collect some data from the corpus, data relevant for a major question that we are thinking to investigate. Accordingly, we'll select items and create a data set. Uh, Barbara uh, explained uh, that um, on, in her introducing uh, class. Um, so um, it's important uh, to see the difference between a corpus from the archive studies um, perspective and a data set. The data set size may vary. It, it can be a few items, a dozen, a hundred, a thousand. Uh, it's up to you and uh, uh, up to your assumptions. Let's now focus on the inventory stage. This step is essential. You can't digitize without um, having inventory before. Uh, this step is essential. It must be done according to several prescriptions. A notice must be drawn up for each document. It is then computed into a catalog register, which includes it along with many other records produced by many other authors, institutions, and other providers. Uh, for us, for example, in France, uh, you can see um, on the right, the um, catalog uh, of um, uh, arch archive and manuscripts of France. So um, as uh, uh, we are dealing with an archive corpus, we must um, aggregate our data with, uh, within uh, this uh, French catalog. And uh, every uh, national library and national archive has it, its catalog. It's mandatory to have in mind the insertion into the data aggregate and the, uh, the notice has to meet an interoperability requirement. If um, anything uh, has to be explained, um, please just tell. Now, uh, once uh, the, the corpus is inventory, um, let's focus on digitization standards and guidelines. Um, through tutorials, you, you can access to experiences and uh, good practices. The technical solution chosen takes into account the type of material, the target audience, intended use, 
and so on. And all the um, national libraries um, spread these kind of tutorial and good practices. For example, uh, digitization is made for an audience of researcher, researchers, sorry. So uh, the JPEG format of digitization is quite relevant. But for enhancing access or improving preservation of material, TIFF format um, is needed with uh, 400 DPI. Um, you have to pay attention to, to fair data principles. Fair data principles are a key element in the context of open science. F fair, it's F for findability, A to accessibility, I interoperability, R reuse. What does it mean? It means that uh, um, it's not anymore, it's not possible today to have your corpus digitized only with your own system that um, couldn't be reused by other people. And uh, uh, it's important to pay attention from the very beginning to this um, obligation of uh, uh, interoperability and reuse. Now, let me introduce to you um, the, our project, um, Project Numerislav. Um, that is, um, that has um, debuted um, four years ago. Um, in Paris, the Institute of Slavic Studies keeps a rich archival collection of the highest interest. Um, in uh, 1921, the um, Czechoslovak parliament um, granted the University of Paris a donation on 1 million francs, half of which to purchase uh, Professor Denis' uh, house uh, in order to turn into an institute. Uh, professor Denis was um, professor of uh, history in Sorbonne University, and um, he, he was um, uh, supported um, several um, several uh, politics uh, um, 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 sorry, <laughs> seeking from for the world um, um, se several um, political personalities, um, Czech personalities, um, Edvard Benesch and um, um, Tomasz Masaryk, and, uh, and um, so that's why the Czechoslovak Parliament uh, granted uh, the University of Paris this donation. And um, for, for one century, um, the, the Institute of Slavic Studies uh, collected um, uh, correspondence, data, and so on. Uh, and that's why we have a rich archival collection. Um, this collection uh, that uh, we will use uh, in this class, a part of this collection we will use in this class. Um, concerning Mazon, uh, André Mazon uh, was born in uh, 1881 and uh, died in uh, 1967, uh, was um, a Slavist. And uh, it was at the forefront French Slavic studies for half a century. He is a, a son of a journalist, Albin Mazon. Um, he studied um, in um, um, high schools, um, higher schools in, uh, in Paris. And uh, um, afterwards, he, he taught French at the University of Kharkiv. 
in Ukraine um, between uh, 1905 and 1908. And uh, during his stay at the University of Kharkiv was closed by the Imperial Russian government for, for a year for political purposes. Mazon took advantage of this interruption to leave for Prague. Prague, sorry, where he studied Czech language at Charles University. So he, he was um, um, a Slavist in a large sense uh, of the word. Uh, he was a specialist of, uh, of Russian, of, of Czech, of Ukrainian, of uh, Bulgarian too. Um, he studied uh, language uh, from uh, uh, Macedonia in um, and um, during the war, he served as an interpreter on the Eastern, St Eastern Front in Macedonia. After Russian Revolution, he spent several months in Petrograd in 1918, um, um, and uh, he was there arrested and imprisoned by the Bolsheviks. While in prison, he tried to write down all the new words and expressions he, he heard, the acronyms and the linguistic borrowings of those in revolutionary times. Uh, and returning to France in 1919, he became a professor at the University of Strasbourg, then at the Collège de France in uh, Paris. And uh, um, he was later appointed at, as the honorary president of the Institute of Slavic Studies of the University of Paris, as well as vice president of the International Committee of Slavists. So um, that was, he was really at the forefront um, uh, of the studies. He founded and edited the Revue des Etudes Slaves, a journal which remains to this date a major journal in Slavic studies. Um, he was a sp specialist in philology and linguistics and uh, of uh, classical uh, literature too. He published several works on literature as well on, as on uh, Russian and Czech grammar. He was a member of the Academy of the USSR, the Bulgarian Academy, the Czech Academy too, and uh, um, Polish Academy. Um, here is Mazon during the World War One, and uh, here is um, a bit later. Here is uh, the, the archive fund, um, the archive uh, Mazon in our project uh, Numerislav. I have to say that uh, this uh, portal, uh, portal Numerislav is not open to the public yet. yet. We are preparing um, that and uh, we hope that it could be done um, before summer. But uh, <clears throat> we, that's why we has we had inventory and uh, we are now digitizing all these um, documents <coughs> here is a cartoon for from a satirical journal hippopotamus bigemot in in ussr as he was elected as a member of the Academy of USSR in 1928. Um, this journal was published between 1925 and 1929. Um, <clears throat> published this um, cartoon about him. Um, These are the words uh, of the cartoon. André Mazon, a specialist in Slavic languages, came to Leningrad to study new words that had appeared 
in recent years. This is um, a glimpse to um, the period he spent in, in jail in, uh, just after the revolution. And Mr. Mazon dig his mouse nose into science, looking for new words. Science didn't have a clue. When it came to new words, it could not figure out their terms like the kid or the pissing girl. You bet science, thought Mazon. As an office job, yes. You have to get to grips with everybody life. That's how Mazon went to rub shoulders with life. He rubbed them up like this. He rubbed them up like that. And again like this. And again like that. You can show this, this illustration there. Um, here, he notes everything. And having rubbed himself in such a way, he prepared to leave. But still, he made a speech in Russian at the departure banquet. Guys, he said, get lost. Let's have a good drink to the prosperity of the Russian language. Why should we muddy the waters and then, as it were, grumble, open our mouths and spoil the mood? And science opened it, its mouth wide and thought, oh, those foreigners, which such, such an accent, you can't get a single word, and famous on top of all of that. So that shows that uh, uh, Mazon was uh, quite well known uh, even in, uh, in USSR. <clears throat> he attended to be a link between the older generations of philologists and the new one. And here is one of our documents. It's a letter of Yerji Polivka to André Mazon. A letter, <clears throat> uh, you see that it's a, uh, a tape, um, a tape script. Um, Yerji Polivka uh, was uh, well known through philologists of all generation. He, he studied Slavic philology at the University of Prague and the University of Zagreb. At that time, he was particularly interested in the major works of the Bulgarian language. In um, 1982, he submitted his thesis to the University of Vienna and received his doctorate from Charles University in Prague two years later. Um, you see now um, how the, um, these networks uh, of um, the network of Slavic studies uh, was forming. Um, people studying in, uh, in one capital, um, uh, teaching in another capital, and um, 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 getting in correspondence with colleagues, and so on. This is the second uh, folio, the second folio of this letter. Um, how you can see that uh, our documents are um, some of our documents are like that, very uh, well uh, visible and lisible. Um, I can imagine that uh, for um, uh, a Czech student, uh, it, it's not a problem to uh, read uh, that kind of, of, uh, of letter. Some of the letters are uh, very uh, as um, uh, written um, are written letters with uh, um, a scribe, um, very um, with writing very difficult to uh, to describe. But this is not the case the case here. Um, here you can see a letter written in French by Giovanni Maver, uh, a professor of Slavic philology at the University of Padova in, uh, um, in Italy. Um, I remember that um, on our first class, uh, uh, we had a, um, a young lady uh, from Italy. Um, 
so um, here uh, we can say that Giovanni Maver, um, born in uh, 1981 and died, uh, he died in uh, 1970. Uh, he studied in Vienna. Uh, then in, in Firenze, uh, afterwards in Paris, and he wrote his PhD thesis in Vienna. Uh, we can see uh, here once again um, this um, uh, this um, uh, personalities uh, who uh, lived and uh, um, in uh, different countries who. Um, uh, who spoke uh, several uh, European languages and uh, and um, uh, got in, um, in into correspondence uh, with uh, colleagues, European colleagues. This is uh, the letter of Giovanni Maver. Uh, the end of the letter. Uh, it was a uh, three folios. A letter, and uh, <clears throat> here um, Maver uh, underlines the role of scientific journals. Um, he, he writes about the Revue des Études Slaves, who was uh, founded by Mazon, um, and he, he, what. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what what is said? Um, the Revue des Etudes Slaves has now become an in in, indispensable working tool for all Slavists, and the article published in it corresponds exactly to the rich program it has set out to achieve. Should France carry on, it will take Germany's place in this field. We Italians are only beginning and our goodwill is much hampered by the difficulties of obtaining the necessary books that are completely lacking. It's interesting because uh, we, we see here that uh, um, <clears throat> it's a, a kind of, a, a, of competition too. It's cooperation between uh, um, between uh, personalities, and uh, but it's a competition um, to between uh, countries. <clears throat> Here is the front cover of the Revue des Etudes Slaves, the first issue on the left, and the last e latest issue on the right. And here is the journal Slavia. Um, Slavia, uh, uh, journal Slavia is published uh, since 1922. And uh, we have an interesting correspondence between the editors of Slavia, Huyer and Murko, and Mazon. Uh, we have uh, several letters. Uh, about the um, the first issue of Slavia, and here is uh, Slavia today. Um, it's um, an important journal in Slavistics uh, today, and uh, you see on the short description on the website of uh, Slavia that. Uh, um, it's first launched in the year 1922. Here is the Revue des Etudes Slaves online today. And here is a letter from Mattia Murko, co-editor of Slavia, and um, a letter to André Mazon. Uh, of uh, 1922. Here you can see that uh, the letter is written in Czech, 
and uh, it you can we can read it without any difficulty here is um a letter for for folios letters letter for from a, a polish slavist it's a a letter in polish um, we don't have many letters um, in in Polish in our in our archive, but we have a few. And this is um, a postcard from uh, Janis Enzelins, uh, a Latvian philologist. Uh, we can see here that uh, he wrote uh, his uh, postcard in German. We have several letters from uh, Enzelins written in German. Um, I saw that um, uh, Sylvie uh, um, interested in uh, the languages in, in, in her video, interested in languages in which uh, the letters are written. Here is a, um, a postcard in, uh, in Bulgarian, uh, written by a Bulgarian historian and uh, linguist. Um, you can see that uh, it's, uh, it's written in, in Bulgarian. And here is um, a letter, uh, a tapestry letter uh, from Max Wassmer, the editor of the German journal Zeitschrift für Slavische Philologie. Um, this journal was uh, founded in uh, 1924. Wassmer um, is a um, a German from Russia, we can say. He was born in St. Petersburg in a German family, and he graduated in uh, St. Petersburg uh, University. After the Russian Revolution, he taught in Saratov and uh, Dorpat, um, uh, today uh, Tartu in Estonia. He settled in Leipzig in uh, 1921 and moved afterwards to Berlin in 1925. He, he taught in New York too, uh, just before the, the Second World War. This is a, a letter of uh, Fasmer to André Mazon, uh, written in um, 1930. It's written in uh, German. This is um, a short description of uh, Zeitschrift für Slavische Philologie. Um, the journal is uh, edited to, um, today. And um, it, its aim is the promotion of Slavic philology in its entirety, including all Sla Slavic languages and literatures, and without narrowing down its scope to a certain field of method or methodology. So um, in uh, this, um, this network, we, uh, we can see the, the three major, um, the three major journal, journals of uh, Slavic studies in the Western uh, Europe. Um, we can add, of course, uh, the um, uh, uh, questions uh, of uh, linguistics, uh, which is the, um, the famous uh, Russian uh, journal about uh, that field of research. This is the Zeitschrift für Slavische Philologie today.
And uh, here is a, a postcard from uh, FASMA written in uh, 1942. Um, I uh, choose to show you this postcard uh, for historical reasons. Uh, at that time, uh, as you can see on the stamp, uh, it was a the time of uh, Second World War, and um, it was quite difficult to uh, to continue uh, to um, the, cor the correspondence between uh, uh, personalities. And um, um, here um, we can see that uh, um, people used. Um, uh, what is uh, what is called a uh, um, hesops language, uh, a language uh, that uh, um, that only um, people who know uh, what is talking about can understand. Um, let's read that letter. It was a pleasure to receive a message from you. We had been worried about you. We are very hurried about G. This uh, G is um, a, a person who was in a, a concentration camp at that time. Um, it, it's um, a poet and a, called uh, Mikhail Gorlin, Gorlin uh, who, um, who worked at that time at, in the Institute of Slavic Studies in Paris. And uh, he was arrested together uh, with uh, a wife and uh, uh, they died uh, together uh, during, the, um, during the war uh, in concentration camp. So we are very worried about Mr. D. I'm doing my best, but I do not have much hope. We have been helplessly confronted with similar cases here for some time. Um, here you, we can uh, understand uh, the situation of, the, of these years through um, this postcard. And uh, after war, uh, another letter to Mazon from Fasmer, but uh, written in uh, 1954, written in French at that time. My dear friend and colleague, after my return to Berlin, I feel the need to cordially thank you for all you've done from, for me during my stay in Paris. I returned to Berlin full of impressions of a unique city, an extraordinary theater, and an extremely friendly scientific environment. Once again, I thank you most sincerely for the kind reception in your house and in the Institute of Slavic Studies. And um, this is uh, another side of uh, these, uh, uh, the life of these networks. It's uh, um, how you can say the entertainment, um, the um, receptions and uh, um, uh, visit to theater and so on. Um, so in that time in 54, uh, it was possible to uh, experiment this, this side of a, uh, of scientific life too. Okay, uh, I finished with my, uh, my PowerPoint. Um, um, maybe you have some questions or uh, if there are, uh, please to answer. I, I tried to show the variety of, uh, of the samples um, that, that we have. 
um, letters written, letters type script uh, in various languages, postcards, letters, and so on. Um, I, I try to, to show you this variety. Okay, if, if there are no questions, maybe uh, we can go on with, the, with your video, uh, Sylvie. Uh, uh, the, the, the video I, I saw on the, um, on the page of, the, of our course today. What do you think of that? Oh, uh, I, I, I'm actually quite puzzled because that was my preparation for the next lesson. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So, Sorry. Uh, uh, Sorry for my mistake. Do, do, do you um, uh, do, do you do you uh, have uh, uh, any anything more for for the uh, half an hour that that we still have, or uh, <clears throat> or or are you finished now? Uh, I, I I can show uh, maybe more samples. I don't know what is um, interesting, or uh, maybe I can show you uh, the um, uh, our project Numerislav. It, it would be uh, maybe a good uh, a good idea to uh, to show you the uh, our our portal, which is not open to the public yet, but. Uh, uh, uh it's uh, uh it's visible yes uh, uh, that that that's a nice idea to me and i really appreciate it and uh let me just uh, let me just insert a small uh announcement here what yes. sylvie uh, is uh, telling you this uh in in this lecture is going to be a substance of your uh, of your future homeworks uh in my next lesson you are going to learn to handle a tool that is called Tableau. Uh, it is uh, it is for actually it is for business analysts and, and for marketers. But unlike the real data analytics tools we use, the programmable ones, uh, this is just interactive and clickable, and you don't have to spend a semester learning programming. So so you your uh, your homework for this semester, to which everything boils down is to create a visual essay uh, <clears throat> about, about the data that you are going to see during this semester. Uh, the, the focus is on André Mazot, but if you like the, the, the other ones better, then we don't mind if you create your visual essay about, about, the, other <clears throat> about, about the other topics. Uh, however, we want you to have a hands-on experience with uh, having a tabular piece of data and, and uh, just having a presentation on, online uh, in, in this, this, uh, with this tool. So, uh, Sylvie, you can, you can help them a lot if you show them, uh, if you pinpoint interesting people uh, or... Uh, or interesting timelines, like like the the people in the concentration camps, or what what was happening to the people during the uh, Russian Revolution and how they migrated. Because next uh, next time I'm going to uh, to show you the metadata of the uh, um, of the collection without knowing all the things Sylvie knows. So I'm going to approach it in a very naive way, saying these are people who are in, in uh, close uh, contact with, with André Mazon, but I, I can only tell from, from the letters that they wrote to him, or actually the letters that have been preserved in, in this collection. So whenever I say these were close friends or these were important contacts, uh, I, I do it just, just based on, on the letters. And, and in, the, in your visual essays, I, uh, I imagine that you, for instance, pick a person and, and just, just elaborate on this person, just uh, 
filter the metadata, what letters he or she wrote, uh, then how long the correspondence tape took place. You, you will get pretty much prefabricated from me. Don't, don't worry. I hope it's going to be fun and, and uh, it's going to give you a nice experience. Uh, so, so Siri, if you can give them some ideas for such essays, who is interested, interesting, uh, what, what sort of uh, stuff that we can get from, from the metadata is interesting, that, that would be great. So mm -hmm. that, that was my two cents now. Okay. Um, um, for example, if I uh, choose uh, chose to uh, to give some details about the journals, the scientific journals, it's because there are many interesting letters around the foundation of scientific journals, uh, around the, um, the, the article that will be published or, or not, and so on. Uh, this is an interesting uh, side of, of this uh, correspondence. And um, of course, afterwards, if uh, uh, someone is interested in, uh, in a person in particular, uh, of course, please ask, uh, is it an interesting uh, person uh, and so on? I, I will answer, of course. Um, uh, but uh, um, it's quite difficult now to, to say uh, this person interesting and this one and this one. Um, I tried to show you some interesting person through my samples, but uh, of course, if you if, if you have a, a question about uh, personalities in particular, uh, I will answer uh, if it's possible. So uh, let me show now um, my um, uh, our portal. Um, I I will share the. Um, the screen uh, too. Um, okay. Um, can you see now the the page of the of the portal? Yeah, we can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, this is the, the main page of, uh, of the portal. Um, and um, uh, you can see uh, several images. Um, this is a, a postcard to André Mazon. Uh, uh, this is a, a painting for, from a um, Czech painter who gave this painting to uh, Professor uh, Denis. Uh, Ernest Denis. Uh, this is the, um, the roofs of Prague and uh, uh, the painter is Chetelik, Yaroslav Chetelik. It was painted in 1907 and uh, we have this painting in the uh, Institute of Slavic Studies in Paris. Um, after... <laughs> okay, I will wait for the... Uh, this is a, a graphic uh, from uh, Alexei Remizov, um, um, a poet uh, uh, and um, writer and uh, uh, graphist too, um, a Russian emigrate uh, in Paris. Uh, this is Remizov. And uh, afterward, this is uh, from uh, photographs from Baron de Baille, um, who um, uh, traveled uh, a lot in, uh, in Russia and uh, throughout the, the Russian Empire. And um, we have a quite a rich collection of uh, his photographs. So this is the main page. Uh, of the um, of the portal, and uh, here are um, the the archives. Several uh, we have twenty 
five archive, uh, archival funds. Um, here you can see that uh, in uh, each each fund is um, figured by um, a photograph. Um, we have an important iconographic fund, iconographic archive uh, about um, Leon Tol Le uh, Tolstoy, uh, who was given by um, uh, uh, his daughter, Tatiana Tolstoy. We have uh, around uh, 400 uh, photos. Uh, many of them uh, were made by um, Tolstoy's wife, Sofia Tolstoy. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> the fund Ernest Denis, uh, spoke about Professor Denis. And uh, <clears throat> here you can see that uh, some of them are in red. Here, that means that uh, uh, the the archive is already inventoried. This is uh, the case of the Fond André Mazon. Here, we can see now the Fond uh, Fund André Mazon, and. Uh, Here, we have uh, <clears throat> a few documents already uh, digitized on the, um, uh, in, in the portal. And um, all the documents that uh, we have uh, digitized um, and uh, that I showed um, in the class uh, will be uh, inserted uh, aggregate aggregated in the in the portal soon so here for example here is a letter from um, a russian um, emigrate uh, emigrated uh, uh, young um, specialist uh, in prague it, his name is uh, Bagatyrov, a specialist of um, ethnography and uh, folklore. Uh, so here you can see the digitized letter from uh, Bagatyrov to Mazon. So uh, <clears throat> our aim is uh, <clears throat> to show. Uh, not um, the whole um, corpus of Mazon's letter. We will not digitize the 3,000 letters of Mazon, uh, but uh, we will select uh, interesting letters uh, for uh, spreading, uh, digitizing and spreading. And this is an, an important uh, question uh, we have to deal with. Um, shall we digitize a whole corpus or only a data set? And uh, um, how are the, what are the criteria um, for uh, selecting um, a letter uh, digitized or not? This is um, uh, an important question. Um, we, it's possible to, to have a, a discussion about that, of course. Uh, so. Um, OK, Sylvie, maybe I have a, I, I have a, a foundation on which we could discuss it right now. If you uh, if you click on the link uh, that I have added uh, to to the yes.
Sorry, Sylvie, we can't hear you. Ah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 And and you you can obviously hear me now. I'm sorry. I I uh, I forgot about uh, hitting pre uh, space all the time, so I muted myself. Uh, so so this is um, am I sharing? Yes. Uh, that's that's Sylvie's screen with with the link, right? Yes. So so this uh, this is an interactive. Um, uh, in, interactive visualization of uh, the part of the correspondence that, that was in the metadata we've got. And uh, this could help you, you archivists, uh, to, to decide who is interesting and, and also to, uh, it, it could help the students uh, to, to decide whom they are going to elaborate on or, or, or which group of people. Uh, let me describe the graph or uh, <clears throat> Um, can ha, does anyone have an idea what to uh, what, what the graph could uh, could be? Uh, what, what, what the graph could be saying? Just just uh, hazard guesses, please, for a while. Uh, and and uh, well, let let me first ask about the GDPR. Do we really have to do everything in chat? Can't we just interact and and then? Uh, well, good question. Definitely, we don't have to, but we we then we have to do some editing. But definitely, we will make. But then it. let's so do the let's, editing. Let's Otherwise, discuss and yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so Sophia, Sophia uh, uh, you, you have. Uh, yeah. So, well, on the graph, it, it already sets out the criteria of what it is, and that is the running sum of count of Amazon's metadata. So, I'm assuming that. That's the amount of letters depending on like in which year. So like, for example, I don't know whose line the brown one at the very beginning is, but like we can gradually see how the letter count per year has been very steadily increasing and then plateaued and then increased even more. Exactly. So, so on the x axis, the, that's the horizontal axis. We we have the uh, we have the dates. So, so that's the span of the uh, of the of, of the collection. And then we have the running total or cumulative sum or running sum, uh, where where each of the uh, of, of of the rags there or steps uh, corresponds to one year, and uh, the the height of the step is the the incremental uh, the the new letter is written. Uh, written by that particular person. The colors are not there because uh, there are obviously many more authors than there are colors in, in the in, in the palette. So so it did not it made no sense to to add the, the color palette there. But but it is it is interactive. Uh, you can you can look for uh, Sylvie. Now it's your your screen. I can't uh, I, I can't interact with it. But if you go to the author filter and and pick uh, shit. Uh, that, that the brown one is Ivan Ivanovich Shits, namely. So uh, if if you just scroll down, or or if you if you double click on the on, on the brown on on the brown line, then 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 it will filter him out. Mm -hmm. So uh, so, so uh, by by clicking on uh, on on a line, you can see the individual author. So so you can tell how long the correspondence took place and and how. Uh, how uh, what, what the slope was so so how many uh, how many how many letters so as Sophia correctly said uh, this was uh, uh, this person was quite a steady corresponding partner to Andre Mazo until nineteen thirtieth let's say thirty uh, thirty two <laughs> exactly uh, has written eighty eight letters to him in total. Uh, and and we have a plateau, uh, a gap where he didn't write anything, or 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 Mazo didn't didn't preserve anything. We don't know uh, uh, during during the first war. So my question about Schitz would be, what did Schitz, what what, what was he doing during the war? What, what, could he have been a, a soldier fighting and having no time writing letters 
uh, uh, letters to, to, to his intellectual friends or, or what, what that was. What that was. Uh, did he die in, in, in 1932 or, or, or you know, did, did, did he break up with, uh, <clears throat> with André Mazon, uh, et, et cetera? Uh, if you, uh, that, then another one, uh, and, and you immediately see who, who is interesting uh, if you want to, if you want to investigate a person, right? Uh, who, who for, for whom you can find material in the collection. Like here, André Weiland, if you, if you click on him, mm -hmm. just, just click on the, uh, click on, on, on the line, right? So, so there you see that, that he's actually followed Mazon almost his, uh, the, the entire lifetime of the collection, let's say. So they started in uh, 1904, and and uh, with with just one letter, uh, then then and then then the correspondence started like very very in, intensely uh, during the war and 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 afterwards. So what was the role of Andrea Milan in, in in there? Also, uh, if we don't focus on uh, uh, on, on the individual people, but uh, on on the on the plot uh, in in its whole, what what can we say? About, uh, about the correspondence, how rich it was. Um, that there's a, well, <laughs> your turn, someone's turn. <laughs> uh, we can see okay. that. Uh, sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wonder uh, that, Probably there was a significant surge uh, during World War II. Absolutely, Maybe activity. Absolutely, yeah. and and uh, uh, that that would be a good good question for for Sylvie. What the reason for that was that that during the Second World War, when every everyone was worried they they were so active. So uh, did, did this did the letters reflect like the worries or or was something anything more happening? Do do you know that already? Uh, yes, it's uh, it's very it's very interesting. Um, what uh, concerning uh, Vaillant and uh, Mazon, um, uh, the fact is uh, that uh, during the the Second World War, um, France was um, uh, was separated in two parts. The north of France was occupied by German. Uh, uh, army and uh, the south of France uh, was uh, what we called a uh, free zone. And um, uh, Mazon um, at that time lived in, in Lyon in the south of part uh, of France. And uh, um, that's why his, uh, his colleague uh, wrote uh, letters uh, to him. And uh, for example, uh, uh, Vaillant, uh, who was um, his, uh, his close colleague in, uh, in Paris, um, could wrote um, letters to, to him. Um, this is uh, very interesting uh, to, to, to see that. And uh, uh, at that time too, um, uh, people uh, wrote uh, with this uh, Aesop language, um, uh, uh, as, I, as I said, um, um, for um, Fasmer and Mazon, uh, even in France, it was uh, it was used to to write uh, with uh, through this Aesop language, um, and uh, we can see uh, in the letters we can see the the, the traces of that. And and how about the twenties? So so it, it's it's possibly uh, the time of of, of the um, was there a special correspondence around uh, around the foundation of the of the of Czechoslovakia or, or did 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 Andrea Mazon reflect on uh, on many of the Slavic nations uh, receiving their national states or just changing their status in uh, in, in the countries where, where they were living? Did he have any any correspondence with politicians, for instance? 
Uh, yes, yes, there are some letters uh, from Benesh, for Ed Edward Benesh, uh, but um, um, I would say that it, it was uh, um, it was a little bit young <laughs> at that period. Um, uh, uh, Ernest Denis and Antoine Meillet uh, had a uh, uh, continue, uh, continued correspondence uh, with uh, them, but uh, there are some letters from uh, uh, from Benesh, uh, for example, uh, to Mazon. Yes, they are. Mm. What were what were they discussing? What was was it something that Benesh wanted from uh, from Mazon, or was, was Mazon interested in something particular? Um, <clears throat> At the just after the the Second World War, uh, many many letters uh, of uh, Mazon uh, concern uh, the exchange of um, of books. Um, he, his aim uh, was to found a, a library in uh, into the. Uh, in the, the Institute of Slavic Studies, and he was searching for uh, books. Um, this doesn't concern the, the correspondence with uh, Benesh. Um, the correspondence is, uh, is around the Institute itself, uh, because uh, um, at, at the very beginning, it was uh, a little bit complicated. Uh, how can uh, can uh, uh, Czech Czechoslovakian Parliament uh, give this um, this money to the University of Paris? Uh, there were uh, um, there were uh, discussions uh, about that. Um, uh, how could it be uh, more simple and so on? What are the what are the aims of the future um, Institute of Slavic Studies uh, and so on? Um, the the Czechoslovakian uh, authorities um, had their uh, objectives and uh, and aims, and uh, they expressed them. Uh, to uh, the foundators of uh, of the um, Institute of Slavic Studies, um, these uh, correspondence are uh, around that type of questions. I see. Uh, would you would you say that Andrea Maso was a political person, or was he that type of philologist who was interested in the in the ancient past, like like just just the just the fairy tales and and, and so on, and, and was not interested in uh, in the current situation of the people too much. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Very interesting because uh, um, he, when he was arrested in, um, in Petrograd uh, in uh, 1918, um, he, he he said that uh, he's there uh, as a, a, a journalist, and uh, but in fact uh, he was there for um, for the um, um, how can I say uh, for for the army for for the French army. Uh, so um, uh, <laughs> at that time uh, he was. Um, uh, a Slavist and a philologist and so on, but uh, he was uh, too uh, uh, a political person and uh, we can say a military person uh, uh, too. So um, I would say I would answer both. Mm -hmm. uh, Sophia, Sophia has a, has a question. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like uh, you said that it like, um didn't make sense to like introduce a like a color palette but what, what I was thinking about when you were talking about like raising the question of whether um Mazon was like corresponding a lot with politicians and that kind of thing 
Is it possible to color code uh, the entire graph in terms of the nature of the correspondence, in terms of it being more of a personal, intellectual, or political nature, or developing a, uh, a categorization that uh, presents the main like themes that are occurring within the letters? It is absolutely possible, but it is not in the in the data itself. So I can very well imagine if you elaborate on something, on a part of it, then, then you, you can manually categorize something. So just, just filter the table, filter the rows you are interested in. And then if, when you add nationalities or, uh, of the people or their occupations, or if you even read the letters or, or you know, uh, that, 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 that's up to you. Uh, the the minimal minimal plan would be just just uh, glue something together that's already been there, but we would be extremely happy about about anything what, what you do on top of it. And and I hope Sylvie and and her colleagues are are going to uh, to assist you with that by uh, by the way giving uh, giving away some some material like uh, let's say images. Could the students use the photograph collection to illustrate their their, their visual essays, Sylvie? Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I was, I was just. Uh, Sophie had a had a yeah, yeah. really I, I good question about. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's uh, how can we make it possible for uh, students who are really interested in the collection would like to delve into into it uh, to to see the letters and possibly to get access to at least if you choose some pictures images that they could incorporate in their uh, in, in their worksheets, well, uh, in, 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 in the data stories they are going to create, something that you could then display on numerous love web uh, if you wanted mm -hmm. to yeah. brag with it. So, yeah. so just, just, just to, to give them that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, sh could, we, could we make it like this, that, that uh, the students would ask you for material to, to do their research on, on concrete people? Uh, well, like, like any other researcher who would who would knock on your door at at, uh, at Numerislav. Yeah, yeah, of course, yes, of course, it's possible. Hmm? Then, uh, then, then uh, you will, uh, Sophie, for instance, and everyone who's <clears throat> inquisitive, like Sophie. So, 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 if you just uh, write to me an email, then uh, and and ask. Uh, her to collect something for you, then then you are free to uh, uh, to, to uh, make a small uh, a small research project around that. Mm. Yes, of course. Mm. And and I, I would like to say that that uh, the, of course we don't want you to you know fail the the uh, the course. Uh, so so we are we are looking forward to what you are going to show us. And we don't care so much if it's if it's uh, focused on uh, on on the uh, on the plots and and on 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 the computations or whether you just gather material and 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 create something like like a website. You don't have to only only have plots in in Tableau, but but it, you can you can have something really like like a picture and 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 comment comment to it. Or, or embed a video, so so it's it's really versatile, uh, and and we don't we we would absolutely not tell you that that it's not valid if you don't have if if you haven't computed or calculated anything there. So so it's gonna be up to you. Only uh, I can I can only uh, give you the metadata I got from uh, from the archive and and uh, help you with plotting it. Uh, and and the actual the actual stuff is uh, is the property of of uh, of numeric love, so so we have to sort it out with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah just write a, uh, an email, and uh, if you have uh, uh, some queries or. And, and please keep keep me in uh, in in the loop, so so we can uh, we can discuss it further. Like what? What is possible? Uh, if if you if you would like to have any consultation uh, with with Tableau, just drop me drop me an email and and we'll we'll arrange a, a, a session. Uh, 
I, I would leave it to individual sessions right now because we are coming from three different institutes or maybe even more. So, so it's hard to, uh, to have a fixed hour where everybody would be able to attend. So, so let's leave it at that and, and see how it's going to work. Um, yeah. Uh, excuse me, may, may I draw your attention on uh, uh, missing data here? Auteur non identifié. Uh, can you see that on the, on the right side? You, you have the name of an author, Olar Alphonse, and after uh, auteur non identifié, non identified author. We have, there are two, non, uh, two times here non identified author. This is the problem of missing data. Uh, Barbara spoke about that um, in the first class. Um, uh, this is a problem, of course, uh, that we have to solve uh, when uh, we have uh, missing uh, data. And um, we, of course, we try to identify everything, uh, but uh, it, it happens that uh, an author is, is non-identified, um, a, a place of the place where uh, the letter was written is not, uh, it, it's not written uh, and uh, we don't know um, the place, um, the date too. Um, we have some, some cases of, uh, of missing data um, like that and um, and of course, this is a, a serious problem. Uh, the, the problem is even more serious, and I, I let it at that, that it, it's not just two times you, you have an unidentified author. Uh, it's just that one archivist writes author uh, uh, with, with colon and one without. So, so it's two, uh, two different, different marks for, for one, one common thing. And I just left it at that, since I thought uh, you, anyone interested can, uh, can trace all the uh, non-identified people, like uh, uh, up, up there, it, the, there are several, several more uh, versions of auteur non-identifié, -identifi and, and, and also sometimes the archivists noted who that could be, the, the, the suspicious person. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this this could be uh, this could be a nice task for 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 someone mm -hmm. to to make sure <laughs> to, or, or to find out, to yeah. find out yeah. who that was based on 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 uh, on other other letters. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so so that that that's going to be that's going to be um, the uh, the topic of of the of the next lesson. Uh, I have I have created videos. Uh, in uh, beforehand so if you uh, if, if you want to be prepared and, and watch my next lesson like an opera so that you know everything before what uh, it's turn uh, it's gonna <laughs> going to turn out like then then you are then feel free to do that but uh, but uh, one important thing is that you have tableau uh, public installed on your on your computers that you have a user account there so uh, and and that that we can uh, that uh, at the end of the lesson we can check with everyone that that we can that that you can start working on your on on your homework, which is going to be a very easy one, a very very short one, uh, but it's going to be hands on and in Tableau and and uh, to be submitted for 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 the fourth lesson. In the fourth lesson, we are going to interrupt the uh, the work with Tableau. And uh, we are we are going to investigate the digitization part of the uh, uh, of, of of this archivist research archive research, uh, and and you are going to see the act some actual letters and and uh, get a hands on experience with transcribing them, uh, and and uh, then if if you gather uh, enough data for for the uh, different languages that are. Uh, that 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 are uh, in in the collection. Then uh, we can try and, uh, and and train a model that would and, and run the the model of the handwriting recognition uh, in the tool again on on a letter that was and and we can uh, we can observe whether our models have improved uh, the recognition performance of the tool on on our letters or not. 
So, but, but that really depends on how much data we produce in the fourth lesson. So to the fourth lesson, you will get a small homework from the third lesson. And to make sure that, that you do it smoothly, you have to come to the third lesson, next lesson, uh, with, your, uh, with, with your Tableau already installed and, and definitely uh, at least with well, installed. And, and that means that you have to have a, a, a login on, on Tableau. And if anything uh, about Tableau, then, then please drop an email to me. Any other comments, questions? Uh, yes, may I speak? Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, I just sum it up. Uh, from today, we have no assignment. Right. About everything you have introduced in, um, in the class today, we will have that assignment from the third class to fourth. So today we are not going absolutely, to Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, you, you, you. Got, you got a spoiler for, for the next lesson only. <laughs> all, all right. Then I think the time is almost over, isn't it, Barbara? We still have five minutes. Uh, I have a, a question to you, Sylvie. Um, uh, shall I um, send my uh, email for uh, the tools, Tableau, and so on? Or have you already uh, um, not, not noted that, uh, that I wish to use, to use the tools? Uh, you have to... Uh, I haven't got an email from you about it. No, no, no. I haven't sent it. And uh, maybe... I, uh, I have to. Uh, well, uh, if you if you just attend the next lesson yes. with uh, okay. with your with your account, uh, which which means uh, go to to the, the the course page just like the students do. Okay. Uh, okay. Go to the to do list, and and there there you have uh, there you have a link with with uh, uh, the Tableau download, uh, and and you download it, click on it, install. And, and run it. Well, okay. you Thank don't you. have to run it, just make sure it's on your computer. And if you fail, drop me, drop me an email. Okay. Thank you. If a, any one of you has is in trouble, drop me an email and we'll sort it out. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, if you if we have just a, a little more time, um, maybe I, I can say a few words about Schitz, uh, Ivan Ivanovich Schitz. He, he was a, an historian. Uh, he, 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 he lived in, um, in Russia and uh, in, in USSR, and um, he sent to Mazon uh, his, um, his diary. Um, and um, this diary uh, uh, was about uh, the, the years of uh, um, the, the emergence of a uh, Stalinian terror at uh, the end of, um, of the 30, uh, 30s, yeah, uh, from that for, for these years, um, he has a, <clears throat> uh, a diary of, uh, of the big, um, how can I say, um, uh, Sophie, may maybe you will help me. Dnevnik um, Velikova um, Pireloma. That's the diary of the, you can call it great change or you can call it the great shift. Or the because like shift, the long, yeah, yeah, yeah like right. breaking yeah. something, but shift would be more appropriate. Yeah, yeah. the great like shift. It, it means um, the the beginning of the of the Stalinist terror, and um, uh, Mazon uh, kept this diary in the, in the archive, uh, but uh, he tried to publish it, but uh, he couldn't publish it, and. Um, some years ago, um, our colleague, historian, uh, Vladimir Berilovich, uh, published this diary 
of, uh, of the big shift. He was um, an historian of shifts and uh, he, he stood in, uh, he stayed in, uh, in the Soviet Union. He didn't immigrate. Yeah, okay, so if there are no questions or comments, well, thank you, Sylvie, for a very nice historical excursion. And Sylvia, thank you for a great teaser for, for the next three, next three classes. Thank see you. you. Thank see you. you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, and see you next week.